In this part of the problem, our goal is to normalize the wave function, which is a time and space dependent wave function, but it's just frozen at time equals zero. So this is just a snapshot of the full wave function at time equals zero. And uh, normalizing just means finding out the constants, the coefficient out front of the um, constituent wave functions that make up the main wave function. If we look at our wave function, it's a superposition of two different wave functions at two different energy levels, one of them at level one, one of them at level two. And since the coefficient is out in front and it can be distributed in, we know that the coefficient is the same for both of them. So before we even start the question in trying to solve for the, uh, or to normalize a wave function, AKA solve for this co coefficient in front, uh, quantitatively, we can kind of get an idea of qualitatively what it is going to be. Since it's a superposition and it's shared by both of them, we know that it's an equal amount of this wave function and an equal amount of this wave function. Um, so that means that it's one half, half the time we're going to expect this wave function and half the time we're going to expect this wave function. And since the coefficients of the wave functions are always, uh, when you square them, you get the probability. We can expect that the, um, the coefficient a is going to be equal to this, which is equal to 2 over, square root of 2 over 2. So whenever you square this, it ends up being 1 half, because whenever you square the coefficients, that's the probability. So we're going to expect it to be this, and we could even probably put that down if we were crunched with time for like a, an exam or a question or something. But uh, let's go ahead and start doing it uh, quantitatively. So in order to normalize a wave function, we just uh, will integrate. We know that whenever we integrate the probability density of our wave function over all time, or sorry, all, over all space, is equal to 1. Uh, we're going to have a 100% chance of finding the particle if we add up all the probability density over all space. So now if we just throw, our in, throw in our wave function for this relation here, Uh, we can see that since this is a constant, this is just going to get uh, spit out of the integral here. And then for the rest of this, if we're going to take the magnitude squared of it, we're going to have to foil this all out and then do the uh, complex conjugates of them. So we'll go ahead and do that one real quick. And as we can quickly see here, uh, this is just a fancy way, uh, or the best way I like to think of it is the overlap. So how much overlap does uh, this complex conjugate have with this one and this one with this one? And we know that the wave function, the constituent wave functions that make up a wave function or the linear combination of the wave functions, these are always orthonormal or they're always, they always have a, a no projection in common with each other. So... Uh, this has 100% overlap with each other, so this is just going to equal to 1. This has no overlap, which equals 0 because it's 1 and 2. Uh, and then this has 100% overlap. This has no overlap. So we're just going to have this be our integral. Let me just do it uh, this way to be fully explicit. I'm just going to leave out the uh, x's. I'm sure you guys caught on to that by now. The integration sign gets distributed amongst the two. So this would be uh, this one right here. And then the integral sign with this one is that one. Because we know that the, uh, the complex conjugate 
is equal to the magnitude squared of each one, right? So, so the probability of the probability of finding uh, this particle somewhere in space is always equal to one, and the par probability of finding this particle anywhere in space is equal to one. So we get one plus one. And then, of course, we can then solve this equation for A, and behold, we get 1 over the square root of 2, which equals, excuse me, square root of 2 over 2. And that is our answer, which is exactly what we expected our answer to be. It just makes sense uh, qualitatively. Half the time, we expect to measure uh, the the particle to be in state of the wave function one and the particle to be in the state of wave function two the other half of the time.